when we look at muscles of the lower arm, we need to establish which ones are the flexors, which ones are the extensors, which ones uh, work the digits, which ones work the thumbs or the pollux. So we start by saying that the flexors are the muscles on the inside of the arm. So this would be flexing the wrist and this would be flexing the fingers. Uh, similarly, on the outside of the arm, this would be extending the wrist or displaying the fingers, that's extension. So that means all of these are flexors and all of these are extensors. We need to know which side is the radius. So the radius is on the thumb side and the ulna is on the little finger or the fifth flange side. Now all the muscles that go to the fingers usually have the word digitorum in there and the, mus uh, the muscle that goes to the thumb has the word pollux in there. Now usually the muscles that go to the thumb are all deeper muscles so we would have to take off structures to get to those particular muscles. So we start off with the first, first muscle and it's called the flexor carpi radialis. So we need flexor means it has to be on the flexor side. The word carpi uh, coming from the word carpals or wrists, so flexing the wrists radialis on the radial side. So flexor carpi radialis flexes the wrist on the radial side. So that would be this muscle running down on the inside of the arm towards the thumb. So that's flexor carpi radialis. Similarly we've got a muscle called the flexor carpi ulnaris. So it goes down the flexor which is the inside of the arm, carpi, so flexing the wrist, ulnaris. Now we're looking for a muscle called the flexor digitorum superficialis. So we're looking for a flexor, so it's on the inside of the arm, uh, digitorum, so it's heading towards the digits. So it's this muscle down here, this muscle down here, it's actually underneath this uh, superficial muscle, running down towards the digits. So that's called the flexor digitorum superficialis. And finally, finally, we've got a muscle here called the flexor pollicis longus. So flexing, so it's on the inside of the arm. Pollicis, so it's going to the thumb, uh, which would mean I would have to take off a structure. So flexor pollicis longus goes deep to the thumb on the flexor side. So it's this muscle running down here. So I went flexor carpi radialis, flexor carpi ulnaris, flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor pollicis longus deep to the thumb. So when I flip the arm over I'm now looking at the extensor muscles. It's the exact same pattern emerges. We go extensor carpi radialis. So it's extending, uh, extending the arm, so it's on the outside of the arm. Extensor, extend the wrist, extensor carpi radialis down the thumb side. This muscle here has already been used in the brachioradialis in the upper arm. So it's the only other ones left on that side. Extensor carpi radialis. Got the extensor carpi ulnaris, which is extending the arm or the, the wrist on the ulnar side. Extensor digitorum, which runs down the middle to the digits. And the extensor pollicis longus, which is deep to the thumb. So so exactly the same there, we had extensor carpi ulnar radialis, extensor carpi ulnaris, extensor digitorum, and then extensor pollicis longus deep to the thumb. That leaves us with two pronators and one supinator. So on the inside of the arm, if we're going to uh, have a, a muscle that pronates the arm, knowing a muscle can only shorten, it must be on the inside in order to flip our arm over and put it in a pronated state. That means the pronators occur on the inside and in this case the one at the top of the, the, um, the forearm is called the pronated teres and at the bottom of the arm underneath uh, these tendons here running across like a, a, a watch strap is the pronator quadratus. On the back of the arm we've got a muscle which is deep which is called the supinator. So if the supinator were to get shorter, the arm would supinate.